Three, two, one, let's go! Oh, Skippo! T-Roy, show yeah. two at yeah. Ertech. We got another special guest with us today. He's a, a data science machine. He understands the importance of data let's and go. how organizing it will allow you to optimize it. Mr. Yeah. Chris Hatton, thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having me. It's uh, good to be here, and it's good to be here on uh, day one of Ertech. Day yeah. one of Ertech, man. The parties tonight will be outstanding, of course. There will be, although ours is tomorrow. Ours is tomorrow. Nice. Tomorrow will be the better party. Yep. You always do the best ones on day two. Day <laughs> yeah. one's a warm up, day two's the actual. That's when the party really is. Hell yeah. Oh, Hell yeah. All right, man. So, how'd you get into data science? What's your What's a quick quick rundown of your, uh, how'd you get here? Like pretty much everybody by accident. Okay. So I uh, started off as a geologist. I worked two years offshore in the North Sea, uh, mud logging, so catching small bits of rock wow, and yeah. sifting them out of dirt. Uh, went back, decided, you know, two years is enough of that. There's, there's only so many types of rock you can look at before you know you're done. Uh, <laughs> went back to university, got my master's, was a pedophysicist for four or five years working on projects. Uh, global projects, a little bit in uh, North America, a little bit in the North Sea, a bit from the Middle East, all over the shop really. And then uh, kind of fell into data management and um, from there into this whole digital transformation, which is really really what data management's turned into these days. It's less of just archiving data and it's more of, okay, the fundamental building blocks of what companies are doing starts with the data, so how can we get to That's that That's awesome, level? man. I like how you started that you were a mud logger first, meaning you were the one at the drill bit, touching the rock that we are trying to stimulate to bring hydrocarbons back to the well board economic value, and now you're running it on the whole other side of the spectrum mm -hmm. on the data and how you're manipulating data with that one little piece of the 100 billion pieces that we have. Yep. You had your hands on those cuttings. You had your hands on those rocks. You smelt the rocks. You may have even licked them a couple of times, as Once you should twice. have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we oh, all that's have. That's badass, man. Oh, that's yeah. really important. I didn't fill in the health and safety before I did that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really, really impressive. That's really important that you're able to be on the front lines of that. Now you're looking at it on the data side, I think. Yeah, I mean, it, absolutely. I mean, when it comes to utilizing data, you've got to kind of understand where it comes from. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to minimize the uncertainty at every single level, whether that's uncertainty of the actual parameters, the interpretation, or in some cases just, well, I've got three different versions of this same piece of data. Which one should I be using? Yeah, and, cool, uh, man. That's kind of where we're coming from with it. All right, let's do it, man. Let's drill down into that thing. Yeah, okay. let's, yeah let's talk about iPoint. I'm in. So this presentation's a little bit about uh, the bigger picture, the digital transformation, which I'm sure we've all kind of heard about. I mean, if you flow around the industry long enough, there's more than enough vendors here talking about digital transformation, and we're focusing on the subsurface. So this presentation put together is really talking about what is it? Because there's a lot of buzzwords out there in the industry at the moment of what we should be doing and why are we doing it? And then, okay, this is what it is. Why are we doing it? What's forcing us down this path? No one woke up and went, yeah, let's go and do digital transformation. That seems like a really good idea. Yeah. There's driving forces behind that, so why are we doing it? And then the final uh, steps are, okay, seems like a good idea. How on earth do I take my company, which is in some state of flux with the data? I mean, every single organization out there has got data issues. It's a matter of taking you out where you are now and elevating to you the point where you need to be so you can meet those workflows and that leverage that you need to get to. And that's kind of what I was thinking when I was doing this presentation, putting it together was really, okay, as a lot of people want to get there, let's show them how Icon Science can help you get there. Okay. Cool, man, yeah. Let's run through it about 10 minutes, just a high level view, dude. Okay. So basically with, this is just a little uh, saying what digital transformation is. It's nothing too fancy. It's fancy words, but they don't really mean much. Basically, it's taking digital technologies and improving what we do. So on a business level, it's making our organization perform better, faster, more efficient, make more intelligent decisions. Mm -hmm. When it comes to subsurface, it's really just allowing our engineers to make the most of their data so that when they come to work up that data, they're minimizing their uncertainties, they're maximizing their confidence, and that enables them to make better decisions when it comes to well planning, when it comes to completion methods, when it comes to actually affecting the bottom line of the company. It all comes back to that little piece of rock we're talking about, how does that fit into the bigger picture? That's yeah. right. And then this next one is just, it's trying to make it real for what digital transformation is. So, I mean, everybody's listened to music. Everybody, depending on your age, has either had a vinyl collection or a CD collection, or then they went and got a, an, M, an MP3 player. 
and now it's all on your phone or on the computer or wherever it's a streaming service yeah. of some description and it's showing that this is a digital transformation it's taken 130 years but we've gone from wax cylinders all the way to music none of us actually really own our music anymore which is kind of alarming to think about in a certain way but we all have access to it wherever we want to be so it's that sure. it's why do we do it? To make it easier to transport, mean we can access it when we need to, but it also makes it less fragile. I mean, we've all had our favorite CD, yeah. we've all scratched it, we've all cried a little <laughs> bit, and it always does the same thing. There's skip. always that one. Exactly. Now we've got some kind of streaming service, like, I don't need to worry about that anymore. Yeah, I finally got it right. out of my head that, oh, that, that was actually a scratch, that wasn't actually what the song did at that point. But yeah. those are always the songs you end up going back to, even on the streaming service, because yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, they're the ones that really meant a lot to you but yeah. anyways sorry it's an interesting slide like an interesting slide to explain that transformation because i feel like in our industry we we're trying to force the digital transformation as we're trying to make a prediction of what the streaming service is going to be but yep. when we were all using mp3s and compact discs i mean nobody was thinking that then right so we have we're here in the compact disc space trying to come up with a solution that's maybe like a streaming service or what is it yeah right we're, yeah. we're living through that transformation and that yeah, is exciting I mean, times it's the latent pain it's called when it comes to this as a sales process it's the it's the pain you don't even know you have until someone says yeah. hey there's a better way to do this i mean <laughs> yeah like i was happy carrying around like 72 compact discs in my, <laughs> yeah. on my way to school the huge binder in the yeah. car and then Hell this guy yeah. comes in one day and he's like hey look at this and he's got this big box and i'm just like wow how many songs do you put in there like 150 like, oh, wow, yeah. that's like 11 compact discs, <laughs> but look at it, it doesn't skip. Yeah, um, dude, that's yeah. right, it doesn't skip. There's a lot of benefits to this transformation. Okay, that's cool, man, okay, I'm All following. Right. So then, we bring it back to the industry, so it's like, okay, well, like I said, no one's doing this just because they want to do digital transformation. It's like you were just saying there, and it's this latent pain, it's, it's what forces into this. So there's drivers, and then there's kind of, it's like everything, there's a carrot and the stick mentality. So the stick is the fact that we have less people to do a lot of the data handling. So before the downturn, we had geotechs, we had data managers, we had people who would take data, massage it into some shape, make sense of it, and then provide it to the geoscientists or the engineers who go, yeah. thank you very much. I will take that and I will add value to it. Right. Now we don't have those people quite so much or they're busy doing other tasks all over the place. The yeah. geoscientists are having to deal with it. It's not a fun job. Right. Uh, you no. got to go all the way back and it. You want to you want to spend the least amount of time, you know, doing the data scientist work and you know going from what if it's a 50-50 relationship, you want to be doing 80% interpretation, 20% data science. Yeah, exactly. You're never going to get rid of it, but you want to go as much as you can, automate it, put it into something which is churning that stuff out 24/7. We're speaking with clients. Um, all around the globe and some of them are like yeah, it's taking us like 60 hours a week as a company to do this it's like that's a person that's a right. person and a half salary that's right right there it's like okay so one of the problems which people have because our end user are always feeling the pain and then they're like well how can I get my management to understand this as soon as you put a monetary value of hey that geoscientist that you could be paying you're actually paying about $175,000 a year to manage your data and you're not fixing it you're just kind of treading water mm -hmm. Well, how about you transfer that to something which could actually solve that problem once and for all and also improve the happiness of your work stuff because no one wants to be trawling through 16 different versions of the same data. They mm. want the answer. They mm. want to QC that that data's right, but they don't want to QC the other yeah. versions of the data. I don't know, man. That's a, it's an interesting thought because I feel like the industry's in a, in a really like unknown place and, and there's so many different ways to cut the data. And, and for the end user being that geoscientist, for example, we, we need to be the ones QCing the data. Yeah. So is it more so instead of compiling away, instead of compiling QC data together really quickly for someone to interpret it, is it is the is the approach to advance our speed in QCing it for with the geoscientists at that QCing where it's so fast that they can get through a bunch of QCing very efficiently and they trust it and now let's put it in the machine. Yeah, it's the second one. It's it's the doing like the 90% of the heavy lifting, which doesn't need a geoscientist to do it, quite frankly, it just needs a body 
So implying the business rules that, okay, this is this type of data, treat it this way, get it into my system this way. And then that's freeing them up to do that 10, 20% of the workflow, which is engaging their geoscience brain and yeah. their geoscience knowledge yeah. so that they can actually then go and make that difference. And, and that's kind of where iPoint comes in. It gives you all those tools. It gives you that functionality to just look at your data. It's not just an archival system that sits there and says, you got data over there. It says, okay, you've got data over there, and it looks like this across the entire region. This one's an outlier. You might want to take a closer look at that. It's enabling you to look at trends and understand, oh, that's the data that I want to go to. You're accelerating the workflow. You're not replacing it. Cool. Okay. Hell and then yeah, the like rest it, yeah. of these, uh, these trends are just more power, more storage. Some good friends at Amazon yeah. have uh, managed to completely decimate the pricing in the uh, in the storage market these days. So uh, <laughs> that's good for anyone who just wants to store data. Obviously on that, you've also got the cloud-based based data management strategy. People want to put data in a single place. Everyone access it across the globe. Yeah. And then the fourth one is renewed focus on profit. That's, that's not really a new one, to be honest, with the oil and sure. gas. We're, we're a money-driven industry. But as we get more and more of that funding coming around from venture capitalists, those guys want quick returns. They're not yeah. happy to sit on 20, 30 years worth of debt just so that they've got bigger reserves. They want to be producing oil. They want to get it out there quick to market yeah. so that then they can go and refinance or make their, make their profit because they've got shareholders to deal with. So yeah. it's, it's tying it directly back to the business. In your opinion, overall in the industry, do you see a lot of research and development money going into data science? In co with companies? Do you see a lot of people putting a lot of money and a lot of manpower on this? Individual companies in I the industry? I see some companies putting some power into it. Um, it's not an industry-wide thing. I often, the one thing that maybe the industry isn't so good at is keeping our eye on why we're doing it. Yeah. So if it comes to machine learning, why are we doing it? What's the purpose of it? Too often I see it in the industry, it maybe turns into an R&D vanity project where we're just like, well, let's go and throw machine learning at it. And then at the end of it, there's one client I was speaking to, they spent three years on it. At the end of it, they came out with a, uh, a trend between true vertical depth and porosity. And it was like, cool. So what you're trying to tell me is in your shells, as it gets more compacted, the porosity generally gets smaller. Cool, I'm glad you spent three years researching that. that. Good hey, work. That's, that's big news for some people. But yeah, so. I <laughs> like that news. It's I actually like that news. I don't know, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, okay, cool, man. So basically, all this ends up, and I'm sure any engineer needs to know, we can skip through this slide. We're getting pressurized. We're being asked to make more decisions faster, better, so that we can basically go and work through our churn of data and come up with something which really impacts the yeah. bottom line a little bit better. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that kind of leads us onto this data-driven analytics, which is where the whole industry is focusing a lot of time and effort at the moment, which is taking these machine learning algorithms, using the huge amount of data that we find, particularly in the unconventional market, and churning through it and coming up with something that adds value to the industry. And at the bottom of this is, there's still some people like, well, I think it's a fad, it's a flash in the pan. It's like, does it matter whether you think it's a flash in the pan when we've got companies here saying that 75% of all companies are gonna be investing in it in some way. It's, it's gonna hit you at some point. So it's, well, how can I deal with it and try and get something out of it? You can put your head in the sand if you really want to, but eventually someone's gonna make you look at data analytics in some shape or form. So then you get into the challenges. For management, a data-driven analytics is just how on earth do we get? The, the, for management, all they're looking at is, okay, let's run machine learning. No one's really looking at, well, how do I get there? Yeah. What's the process? I mean, how do I get my data, which at the moment is maybe on hard drives, it's off-site, it's in uh, some kind of facility where it's just paper in boxes, it's in people's applications. Some guy wandered off with it when he was uh, let go. There's a whole workflow we need to get there, which is about getting access to that data, making sure it's of high quality, and then distributing it to where it needs to go. So that's, that's kind of the challenges, and that's where Icon Science as a company is really pushing their time, is that, okay, well, let's make this easier for our, for our clients, essentially. All right, let's hop into it. Easy's always good. So at this point, we just give the, the, the companies in the audience a chance to reflect and see, well, where are they? I mean, there's five different stages we put it in here to where you are in your implementation. No implementation basically being your data's all over the shop and you're not really sure what you're doing with it. A complete implementation being everything's sorted. If my geoscientist needs data, they can get it like that. My uh, engineer can get data like that. Have you, have you met a company that has been in that zone, that complete implementation? 
I've met a company that says they've been in that zone. <laughs> okay, so the, yeah, really okay. so that's probably even worse. They think they're in the th zone. They're probably yeah. like down here in like the early implementation. Now, realistically, where do you think the industry is overall? Just just average this thing. I, I think this is a pretty nice graph. I mean, this one shows it pretty nice. It's quite a nice infographic. We are generally kind of in this early to mid implementation phase here. There's few companies out there. There's still a few where they're like, well, I have no idea what I'm doing. Most of them have kind of at least got an idea of where they want to go. And at that point, they come up with a basic kind of plan of, well, let's put the data in some kind of organization so we can do something with it. Yeah. And they may be in certain levels. They may have got a file structure in place. They may have a, some kind of searchable data store. But they're looking at something where they can then elevate it. Often we'll come in with a solution. I'll speak a little bit about this in a second. But when IT have kind of said, well, we're going to do this. And it's a solution that ticks all to IT's boxes. But it doesn't necessarily give the value to the geoscientist and to the engineer. And that's what we see a lot. So this example here, you asked whether I'd ever seen a company that had been the complete implementation. These two highlighted points, one in complete implementation, one in early implementation, they work for the same company. The complete implementation, he's your IT guy. He's done his complete implementation, yeah. which is the data is in a source. I know the data's there, and they can access it. The geoscientist looking at it going, the data's there, I can access it but I have no idea what quality it is, where it came from, right. what's been done to it. I don't know how to yep. get it into my application of choice. There's a whole load of unanswered questions. So depending who you speak to within any given company, it could be anywhere along this spectrum, to be perfectly yeah. honest. I believe it. I know where I am. I know where I am on my uh, own personal files. You see my desktop? <laughs> files everywhere. I clean that out once, once a month, I'd say, my desktop. So you yep. say start with why. Right, we got to start with why. We agree, that's yeah. how we started this show. Yep. We start with why. So if you have that why, there's a lot of power behind that. What is, what is the general why for most of the people that you work with? Is it, is it to truly discover something new that a geoscientist or an engineer is really trying to chase down? They have this hypothesis and they're running with it? Or is it, Let's see what it does, and let's hopefully hope that it changes the economics of our company, and move, and it's money driven, or is it really a, a success of like, I'm trying to unlock what's making this work. I have a couple of hypotheses I'm working with as a geoscientist. Let's plug in these things, and let's let's try to narrow it down. That why? Let's make that successful and see what it does. I don't know, right? It's it's kind of all three of those to be honest, and it, it depends. I mean. The ones that really run successfully are the ones where you can tie it back to the money. Because that's obviously, sure. as soon as you can say that's going to affect our bottom line, that's going to improve what we're doing, uh, checkbox tends to open at multiple yeah. different levels if you can prove that's that That's a up. byproduct though, right? That's a mm -hmm. byproduct of our ability as professionals to try to find that next thing, that step, that yeah. step yeah. change. I mean, often what it is, is that it's, the two main drivers I'm seeing at the moment are that you're either doing something you already do, but you're doing it faster over more data. So you're taking an existing workflow and then you're rolling it out using these data-driven analytics workflows, and then you can really start to expand it I out. I can believe that, yeah. Or you're doing something better than you could before. So you're incorporating more data into a single area and trying new workflows. And that's kind of where this whole digital transformation comes from, is that if you're only dealing with, say, 30% of the data you have as an organization, you're not making the right decisions, you're not making the best decisions, and you're not affecting the bottom line of your company. No. If you can open up all your data through this digital transformation, then launch it into one of these machine learning workflows that we're talking about here, that will enable you to do new workflows that you never even thought of before. Sure. Often our geoscientists do the same thing day in, day out, because that's the data they're used to. You suddenly yeah. go, hey, you've got data-wise X, Y, and Z over there, and you didn't have to pay a single dollar more for them. Yeah. And now you can do all this. Yeah. And why would you not do it? Yeah. I feel that, man. I mean, being able to access the data and have it organized is obviously step one. But like yeah. you're saying, being able to optimize it is a totally different game with yeah. that organization. So if you have a folder with well logs in it, what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. Right? That, yeah. That's a nightmare for any geoscientist. So I like what you're getting at. I like what you're getting at as far yeah. as implementing that data. And you know, now you're doing more advanced workflows. Right. Yeah you know, taking that next step in the, the data analytics or as a geoscientist. Yeah, uh, it's, it's really, really good, man. I, I just feel like where we sit today in 2019, hashtag 2019 Ertech. Hashtag icon booth. You can't, 
I, I think you can't argue the fact that today, no matter what operator, no matter what data you have, it's garbage in and garbage out because our performance is garbage. Yep. This unconventional performance is garbage. So we, we have this all this stuff and we're plugging it in, but essentially, I mean, it's, it's hard. Even if you QC it, what's the answer? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where we're at today. That's the future for us as young geoscientists and young data scientists in this industry. We're going to see it happen. Technology driven, geoscience driven, engineering driven, something's going to have a step change and something's going to pop. And we're going to see it. We're, we're on the front lines it. of it. Yep. Could be here. Let's go. Let's go. You got anything else, Yeah, You want to end it with anything? No, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty good. I mean, yeah. yeah, we pretty much covered it all. I mean, the big thing about what we're doing here is that there's a lot of systems out there will be like, okay, we're going to do data management. Right. The the real thing that we're trying to do here is we're trying to make it for the geoscientists, for the engineer, for the end users, the ones who are battling with this data on a day in, day out basis. That's kind of what maybe separates what we're talking about right here today is to maybe say be like, oh, I've got a document management system or something yeah. like that, which exists. It's like, well, that's a one size fits all solution, but it's a compromise. Can we elevate that? Can we leverage what you already have? and develop a tool which is really going to impact what your geoscientists are doing and then tie that back to well performance, like right, you said. Right. It all comes back to that well performance and historically unconventionals has been on a, let's just drill more wells. Yeah. We're past that now. We're in That's a, right. Let's drill smarter with better information coming let's to us. Let's go. That's awesome. Let's I'm go. really looking forward to the presentation. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your time, Chris. Thank you very much. All right. And we're out. out. Thank you.